I have a figure to show you today that will make you gasp. <gasps> exactly. And here it is. Well, whether you gasped or not, we are going to discuss what this graph is showing and what that means for further understanding the ageing process. And also maybe what it doesn't. All right, so I hope you're hungry because our story today begins with the intestine. In particular, the large intestine. The large intestine is involved in absorbing water and absorbing some of the vitamins from foods, and it's also where most of the gut microbiome is residing. Anyhow, the functional unit of the intestine is the crypt, and at least in humans, we have around 15 million of them, like so. And from what I remember from my undergrads, there has previously been some controversy over the organisation of these crypts. But at least for this video, we will go with the simplified understanding that at the base of these crypts are a pool of stem cells. Stem cells can replicate to make more stem cells, but they can also produce these transient amplifying cells which do most of the replication to comprise the cells of the crypt. As you might expect, the large intestine has quite a high turnover of cells. So since some stem cells will divide to produce more stem cells, whilst others will divide and differentiate, over time, the intestinal crypt becomes dominated by cells originating from one stem cell clone. It becomes monoclonal. A previous study beautifully illustrated this phenomenon using different coloured fluorescent markers, as you can see here. And so I don't know if I stole this analogy, but you can sort of think of the crypt being like a conveyor belt or an escalator of how the cells progress. But anyway, this organisation of the crypt has a unique feature, therefore, that due to this domination by a stem cell, as evidenced by these pretty pictures, all cells in a crypt are derived from a single ancestral stem cell that existed in recent years. That is to say, if there was a mutation in the stem cell, then all the cells would possess it. Because these mutations are found not in the egg or the sperm, the germ cells, they are found in non-germ cells, called somatic cells, Mutations in these cells are called, you guessed it, the Uh, no, somatic mutations. And then if you wanted to find out what the somatic mutations were in the original ancestral stem cell, you can in theory sequence the DNA from any of the descendants. And so, not all mutations are bad. I mean, evolution, right? Some may be good, some may not have any apparent effect. Or some, yes, may be bad. But why have I told you all this? Aha, well, this finally brings me onto this recent paper from Nature, which has already caused a lot of excitement. Somatic mutation rates scale with lifespan across mammals, which is a, a little bit of a spoiler for what we're going to talk about. But what exactly did they do in this paper? Well, quite simply, they calculated a somatic mutation rate for the intestinal crypt for a variety of different mammals, each with different lifespans, from mice, cats, dogs, humans, all the way through to lions. And this is because, as we saw in the intestine, over time we accumulate mutations, even in the world's coolest protein, and unfortunately some of these mutations can give rise to cancer. But do they also contribute to ageing? Well, this somatic mutation theory of ageing has been around for a long time, of which the general idea of the theory is quite simple, apparently. This article from 1965 continues, Spontaneous mutations are postulated to occur in the somatic cells of the body, and since they are, in general, irreversible, their numbers will tend to curtail some cellular function, the cells will gradually become inefficient, or die as the mutations accumulate. And when this process takes place in a sufficiently large percentage of the cells of the body, Senescence, ageing, gradually develops. And then this is my favourite bit. The problem with this theory has been that it has not been possible to test it, because no methods are available for measuring mutations in somatic cells. Well, welcome to the year 2022. And at the Sanger Institute in Cambridge, they've now developed many tools that enable the sequencing of DNA from clonal patches of cells without having to do whole genome amplification which reduces the introduction of biases and errors using small amounts of DNA inputs, and therefore it now enables questions like these to be addressed. 
So in this paper, they chose the intestine as a good model for having a group of cells that possess the same, or almost all the same, somatic mutations, which makes sequencing easier, and also the estimation of somatic mutation rates more trustworthy. So I think the most important figure to talk about is this one here. Uh, and what this graph is showing is how somatic mutation rates correlates with lifespan of the different species tested. There is a tight anti-correlation showing that the lower the somatic mutation rate, the longer the lifespan. So how do they define somatic mutation rate? Well, rate is any change in variable over time. So here they calculated it based on the number of mutations in a crypt by the age of the individual. Then the question is, well, how do you define a mutation? So they ran their sequence data through a variety of algorithms, one of which is the caveman algorithm, and they compare it with non-intestinal tissue to ignore germline mutations, mutations slash variations present since birth. And to also get an estimation of this mutation rate, they also assumed monoclonality of the colorectal crypt samples. And so, as I won't mention it later, they did find similar mutational patterns across the species, despite them having different diets and lifestyles, and that most of these mutational signatures appeared to be endogenous rather than exogenous causes of mutations. But anyway, what important points can we make about this graph? Well, the first thing worth mentioning is Pito's paradox. This paradox essentially asks the question, why don't bigger animals have higher cancer rates, since their cells have to go through more cell divisions and therefore the chance to accumulate more errors? You know, more DNA synthesis, more chance of errors, right? Well, wrong. If you look at the graph, you can see the giraffe and naked mole rat having similar somatic mutation rates, which matches their similar lifespan, despite giraffes being 23,000 fold bigger in body mass. So this suggests the accumulation of somatic mutations is time dependent, not cell division dependent. But then the thing you might want to ask is then, well, why do they have a lower mutation rate? And one explanation for Pito's paradox is that some species have increased DNA repair. And that's kind of an interesting thing to further explore, especially in different species, to see how do they repair their DNA differently to maybe what humans do? Although, if you look at this graph, we're looking pretty good right now. But identifying more efficient DNA repair enzymes could have therapeutic value. And so we also need to address the elephant in the room, or, well, lack of it, actually. But I mean the elephant size gap between the data points. It would be nice to see the trends match in other species or potentially to identify outliers. And then obviously, it would be good to have species who live longer than humans to see if this also fits the trend. And then it would also be cool to have finer resolution within a species, in particular in humans, as I think that would also be quite informative. And then there is correlation versus causation. This graph shows a correlation, but doesn't mean that mutations are causal for ageing. Well, there are cases in mouse studies where they can increase DNA damage and you see the mice age faster. And then there's cases of human progeria patients who show symptoms of advanced aging and have mutations again in DNA repair enzymes. But that still doesn't really address the question of, well, why would mutations cause aging? And I know that review I mentioned earlier gave a couple of ideas, but it's worth considering again here that the study was on in intestinal cells which replicate and then progress to the surface of the intestine and then eventually die. And so there's quite a high turnover of cells here. But what would be the consequences in cells that persist longer in the body, like in neurons? And would therefore somatic mutations in neurons also be correlated with lifespan in different species? And then lastly, here they technically didn't sequence the full genome sequence, so maybe there were mutational events that could be informative. And this is because the 8% of the genome they missed was only recently sequenced. Why this is useful, and if you're interested in what the genome doesn't tell you, then you should watch this video here. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.